Hi, thank you so much. So, um, as I was introduced, I am a NASA data node. For those of you who don't know what that means, uh, NASA started an initiative in 2015 to uh, engage the community to work with their open NASA data and um, to have an inclusive community of uh, women and not only uh, in STEM and STEAM, uh, w which means that um, they encourage people who are interested in data science, but they are not necessarily data scientists. So we have three different categories. There are the advanced data scientists who are um, doing it as their regular job, data science and research with data. And then there are the others, the intermediate and the beginners who are uh, trying to join the data science community. And we have many activities that we are organizing um, with the NASA Data Not community every week webinars where we have uh, data scientists from NASA giving talks and um, trying to find ways in which to collaborate and uh, find projects that we can work together on. And um, in addition, everyone can come up with project ideas and we, we, are, we are highly encouraged to collaborate with each other and uh, to share our experiences uh, with, through presentations. So what I'm going to talk about today is about open NASA data and how you can access it and a few ideas about what you can do with open NASA data since tomorrow you are going to work with it during the hackathon. So the open NASA platform comprises 32,000 data sets. Uh, it has more than 300 publicly available code repositories and 51 APIs. Now the number of APIs is continuously growing and you are also, you have the possibility of uh, developing one. So if you go on api.nasa.gov, uh, this is the platform where you're going to obtain API access, um, which means that if, I don't have a pointer. Anyway, so on the left side you can see the menu and there you can it says API key sign up. So you go there and then you give your personal information, which is basically just the email address. And then you obtain your unique uh, API key. So once you obtain this API key, uh, you're going to be able to use it very easily because all APIs from NASA go directly through uh, URL link. So you're going to be able just to paste at the end of the link your API key and you can instantly access the website with the data. Um, yeah, so the, the API key is private information, don't give it out to anyone. And you have unlimited access to the data. Um, so what you do is you simply pass the key as I said before and then what's going to show up is uh, going to be the information about that data set, which is going to be a dictionary. And you have information about the data, like title, um, where you can find it. Now the problem with uh, open NASA data is that uh, each uh, data set is hosted at a different location. So you might have to do some crawling and browsing the internet. So therefore, one of our data nodes started developing this um, open NASA uh, API um, library, which basically is a package that is going to load you instantly uh, several data sets, which are highlighted here. So uh, what you need to do, you need to go on uh, the GitHub page that I posted there, and you need to download it, or you can just, if you're using uh, Python, you can just pip install the library and it's going to load for you these uh, packages. So um, a bit description. So this is a simple interface to select the data sets and the way it's going to return using this uh, small um, code, it's going to give you uh, in, AP, uh, in Panda data frames. And uh, I think in the previous workshop you heard about pandas and how to use them. 
and this is continuously going to be extended and um, you can just, uh, if you find a library that is not there, you can actually submit a pull request. And um, what else? Yes, so it is an easy way to just uh, control these several different data sets. And now, once you know how to access it, the next question is what you can do with these data sets. So one of the few ideas, you can do visualizations. For example, they have a data set from 1988 to 2017 where you can look at meteorite landings. Uh, the information are, um, you have geolocated data, so you can map it on a world map to see wh where are the most frequently falling meteorites, and you can check the impact and the size with which they landed. You can do deep learning projects. For example, if you like uh, picture analysis, um, APOD, Astronomy Picture of the Day, is a data collection that contains every, it's editing every day a different picture uh, recorded by uh, telescopes or satellites. Similarly, you can do deep learning using EPIC, which is also an imagery collected um, by imaging camera EPIC. And um, I don't know why my figures are twisted anyway. So uh, you can do several pattern recognition or other deep learning projects if you're interested. You can do several data visualizations. One of the examples I just showed you using geolocated data. You can do data analysis. For example, uh, they, what is interesting, they have the NASA patent portfolio. So if you're interested what patents NASA has, you can check that data and you can do some uh, topic analysis. So, as I said, you can do also deep learning with the vast amount of uh, data collected also by Mars rover. They also have sound data. And yes, this I found really funny. I took it from the website, it's a quote. When we retrieve sounds from far off planets, we can apply to filter to identify unknown human space colonies. And that was sort of a joke. <laughs> so you can play around with many things. And what else? For those of you who are not on the software and programming side, you can do hardware projects. Um, I don't know if Leslie Birch had the talk already. Yes, so if you're curious about hardware projects, she's going to have a very interesting talk about the pin that she designed. And you're going to see how that works. You can do art projects, which basically that pin is also half art, half hardware. <laughs> And you can have educational projects. For example, two years ago or last year, there was a group that did some uh, interactive uh, book based on um, NASA data. And I don't know why my figure, <laughs> everything is shifted. Anyway, so um, I presented, yes, five minutes, good. So. Uh, some of other ideas, for example, I'm going to present very briefly what I've been working on. Um, so these 32,000 data sets are comprised in a NASA metadata. So you can find um, one single metadata that is going to give you a dictionary of all these data sets and their information. So it's going to give you uh, information for each data set, what is its title, it's going to give you a description, uh, the organization within NASA that uses that data set, keywords, license, location, and many other things. This is in JSON format, so if you know how to parse JSON data, then you can actually play with this data set. So um, each data is uh, used at pro several different organizations within NASA. So each keyword and description is given by the person who is responsible for that. So basically this can 
uh, using this information, you can start doing natural language processing and uh, topic modeling, which I've started working on. But I'm not going to do, go into details. I'm going to, for example, show you a small snippet of Python code, how you can parse the, that JSON data if you want to access it. And this is going to load it. It's going to be a dictionary of dictionaries. So you are going to be able to, if you look at it, it's looking like this. It doesn't have the lines. I just copy pasted from Notepad because I was in a hurry, so sorry about that. But this is how it's going to look like. So you're going to have information for each. This is for one data set, and you're going to have this for 32,000 data. And these are the information that you access. And then you can do all sorts of uh, text analysis and topic analysis. Um, you can play with word clouds, which I did. Uh, this you can do with Python. There is a package on GitHub that actually allows you to uh, find the stencil, whichever shape you like. And of course, I chose rockets and spaceships because NASA. And uh, you can uh, use this word cloud visualization to see which are the words that are most frequently occurring in the titles in this case. So as you can see, some of them are project names, which are not very informative for us. But we can see other interesting information, like ocean product. And um, two more minutes. OK. So moving on, the same thing you can do with descriptions. You can check um, what are the most frequent words in descriptions. And data appears everywhere. And we can do different shapes. So if you really like this, the same for keywords. We can see earth science, ocean optics, um, water. So very earth-oriented keywords. And if you really like this, basically you're going to have to get the text in one file. You get the stencil in whatever shape you want. And then you go and use this code. and adjust it to your data. Um, so you can find it on GitHub. And you modify it and, sorry. So you modify it and then you can get these nice um, shaped uh, word clouds. So the word clouds don't give us information on how frequently a word appears. It's just going to visualize it nicely. So if we're interested in more detailed information, we are going to look at some term frequency analysis. And if I'm looking at the top 25 most frequent keywords, you can see that um, it's very earthly oriented. Oceans, atmosphere, land, biosphere, clouds, soil. Um, and if we're looking at the description, we can see similarly NASA is not the first, so they are not egocentric. <laughs> and title words, in the title words, we can see most of them are more uh, project type, uh, names, so they are not very informative for us. And so from this on, you can do all sorts of other um, deeper topic analysis um, and um, use machine learning to do further analysis. But since I'm running out of time, I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to wish you all happy hacking for tomorrow. Oh, the slide. Um, I can leave it here for, can people copy it from there? Yeah, OK. So from my side, it is publicly available. <laughs> so yes. Or if you want to give me a, a USB drive, I can just yeah. put it on my laptop and move it, because I did it for okay. the gentleman there. OK, any other questions? OK, thank you again.